continual learning, transfer learning, multitask learning, meta learning, few shot learning, all of them are the future of machine learning. So we go from classic to modern. And uh, so in this lecture, I will be talking about continual learning like a child that gradually learns uh, from, so from starting from very simple tasks and then learning very difficult tasks, but it has a priority. This priority is not well understood in the context of machine learning. Of course, they talk about multitask. Uh, it, they talk about having lots of tasks, but they don't care about how to create a kind of advanced descriptors. And continual learning, so as I said, at each instant of time, we have a different task. And so, it's, so this is the classical thing, traditional thing, which is deep learning. And now we can make deep learning more advanced by using transfer learning or continual learning. But continual learning is just a kit, while transfer learning for example, in this architecture, we have two kids are learning. But in continual learning, uh, you know, you, you can have sh some, shared, some shared layers, just like multitask le learning, but it is sequentially. Our tasks are given sequentially and learning sequentially. But in multitask learning, uh, all of them are learned jointly. And so we have this beautiful article and then I will explain this one, this one, and finally LAML. So we start from simple tasks to very advanced tasks. And uh, so to overcome catastrophic forgetting, which is the first obstacle that you face when, when working on continual learning, you can combine memory-based, which is generative replay. For example, you remember, th you, you, you try to recall something in order to learn, to, to avoid forgetting. And uh, a simple example is MNIST. For example, task one, you just learn zero and one. In task two, you learn two other uh, digits and, and so on. And this is a very nice article. It's just a, a very classical article that everything started by this article, I say. that. Uh, so we try to fix your previous task and then you don't want to change to move your weights of neural networks or whatever too much. So you try to minimize this error as much as possible and but the problem is, is animals' nervous system able to calculate the corresponding element of the Fisher matrix? No. So this article came to rescue and they uses uh, this technique. And of course, there is a good article called Learning Without Forgetting. And uh, uh, this, I love this article because these uh, are are a trade-off between stability and uh, plasticity in the context of uh, uh, computational neuroscience is a profound, uh, it has a profound literature. So you can actually trade -off, do trade-off between stability and plasticity. And of course, other articles like gradient episodic episodic memory for continual learning, and we can have a backward transfer, forward transfer. And here we want to just to maximize because these are accuracies. We want to maximize. For example, if you learned task I and then task J, so you have an accuracy RIJ. So you, if you gradually you want the, the accumulation of all of these accuracies to be as high as possible. And uh, so, so last for task K, for just task K is this. And of course, this one is really hard. That's why we use some tricks. I skip the tricks, but the, finally the algorithm is like this. An episodic memory in life long language learning is amazing article 
but it is based and it is inspired by by this article. So it's like a buffer. You you learn and then, but you have a limited amount of space memory, so you have to uh, write over on that. And we solve catastrophic forgetting. Uh, for example, you have two tasks: question answering. You have another task: text classification. So in order to avoid catastrophic forgetting, we need to just recall. And sometimes we need to get Kenya's neighbors. Uh, first of all, we don't want the weights to be too much far away from the previous uh, uh, task. And we have three models, just an encoder, and, uh, but the decoder, we have two tasks, so one for text classification, the other one for question answering. And finally, we use uh, episodic memory for uh, and for for to do write and read. And for for this one, we use BERT. And uh, WI is only used to make a prediction. So all of this is just for inference. And the parameters are reset to W. So this is a base parameter afterwards. And in training and inference, you could use uh, this local adaptation. And this is the algorithm. And we can understand the role of training regime in continual learning by three great, these four great researchers three Iranians. And stability versus plasticity dilemma, as I said, it, it has its roots in computational neuroscience because we understood that our brains, so uh, for example, uh, uh, when you age, your neurons, the weights do not change. So, so that's why people say that you, it is hard to change the character of a person at the age of 70 or 80. Because it's so stable, there is uh, there is little little room for plasticity. And the role of training regime, I love this article by this by this guy Mirza Mirza Adeh because uh, because he actually tried to uh, write how can we measure forgetting. For example, you have learned uh, and. W1 star is just the optimum, but but if you give it for the second task, you have a gap. Of course, I, I've written, I've I've read some articles saying some they call it uh, performance gap. So it's equivalent to this measure. I like both of them. Both of them are profound. So when the loss, when the gradient, so when we have when when you, when you have reached your optimum, this is almost zero. That's why. Uh, the term goes to zero and remains. And so this remains if you do the Taylor expansion. And so finally, we get this. But using the same tricks that we use, for example, in everywhere, in spectral graph theory and everything, so you can bound it by your first highest eigenvalue, uh, but... But remember, this is a huge matrix. This is a huge Hessian. So it's really hard to do. Of course, you can do, but, but we should add some more tricks in order to make it more practical. And this article is inspired by this article and this article. So they use, for example, mode connectivity and also learning neural network subspaces. Lots of, lots of neural networks. And uh, so your final ensemble model accuracy is always hard. For example, we have 11 models. And when you change the task, you, you try to pick a subs, subspace. And of course, 
You could also use feature replay to avoid catastrophic forgetting. Lots of papers. Uh, NIPS 2018. This this one is great. And uh, all of them are almost the same. And so there are lots of articles about using uh, replay in order to avoid catastrophic forgetting. And of course, you could use conditional GANs uh, and joint training and sequential fine tuning. And you could use joint retraining and replay samples and replay alignment. And continual learning. Uh, this is a great article, as I said, uh, LAML uh, learning on fundamentally different tasks. So the, the task could be really very, very different from each other and you have a generator. And of course, Hilbert says mathematics knows no races or geographic boundaries. For mathematics, the culture world is one country.